Hey guys, I wanted to talk here quickly about taking a water sample. We're here on the Vermilion River, and let's say I was worried about um, nutrients in this river. You know, I was worried about an LJ bloom, or I was worried about pesticides, or I was worried about hydrocarbons that have made their way into the river. How do we actually go about figuring that out? And to do that, you have to take a representative water sample of your water body, and then you send that to the lab to be analyzed. That's really easy, but it's also pretty easy to mess up. So I'm gonna show you here how to do that properly. The first things we're gonna do is we're gonna rinse out this bottle three times. This bottle came from the lab. Um, more than likely it is clean, but you never know, maybe there's a little bit of soap in it, a little bit of something, a little bit of dust fell in there. So we wanna rinse out this bottle three times. So anytime I take a sample from the river, I wanna keep in mind which direction is the water flowing. For us, this water is flowing from your left to right across the screen. Um, it's a pretty slow current right now, but there is a little bit of a current. So any sort of contamination, any sort of sediment I kicked up while I walked in here, or um, anything that's, you know, any dust that was on my legs is being pushed by the current that direction. So I know the cleanest part of this river for me is always going to be upstream. So you're always sampling upstream where that new fresh water is coming in and taking any sort of contamination downstream away from you. So when I actually go ahead and take my sample, I'm going to start upstream myself. And the bad way to do this is just to open up your bottle and to dunk it in like this, where you're just letting it fill up from the very top and then you take your sample. Here's the problem with that. There is a micro layer on top of this water caused by surface tension. So you see all these little bits of dust and plant matter and animals and um, you know little bugs they basically sit on top of the water. And when you take that sample from the very top, you are just pulling that very top layer into your bottle. That's on a representative sample. Repre representative sample is somewhere in the middle of your water column. So to do that, I'm gonna keep my lid on I'm gonna dunk my bottle, get it down at a depth below the surface, and then I'm going to unscrew the cap of the bottle, tilt it up, let the air come out, fill it up, put my lid back on, and now I have a sample. All of this water is from the middle of the water column, it's not from the surface, which is great, that's what we want. And then I'm gonna go ahead, and I'm gonna dump it downstream of me. That way, if there was any bit of soap or anything, on this bottle, it is now behind me, moving away due to the current. Which, due to the wind, looks like it's heading the other way. Don't worry, trust me, it is heading that way. Uh, so I need to rinse this bottle three times. Exact same way, opening it underwater, putting the lid back on, giving it a little bit of a, of a rinse. A little bit of a shake making sure anything in there is clean now we can know this bottle is clean because it's been rinsed with our sample water so now we can go ahead for the sample exact same process upstream of us dunk this in open up the cap not grabbing any of that surface water putting the cap back on and there's a nice clean sample you know we haven't contaminated it with us we haven't contaminated it um, because we're doing upstream of us uh, usually it's a pretty good bet just to fill this bottle up all the way. You don't really, typically you don't want any headroom or any air at the top because then gases can move um, from different phases, um, can undissolve or dissolve. It depends on the test. Some tests you need it, some tests you don't. Again, uh, it depends what the lab wants to do. And now that this sample is taken, I can go ahead and I can throw it into my sample bag. I would have this all written out. This chain of custody form would be filled out when I talk about where the sample came from, the bottle number, and what analysis I want done. And to tell the, the lab, you know, here I'm really concerned about pesticides, so I want uh, pesticides tested of this water. Now that the sample's taken, I go ahead, I throw it, up, throw it on a cooler full of ice, keep this bottle nice and cold. Same reason you have a fridge, right? You keep your food cold so that the microbes aren't active, so they're not gonna change your food. Uh, same thing with water. We keep this water nice and cold, four degrees, so that the microbes aren't changing it. That's it. Super simple rules for taking a good, clean sample. You do that and you have no problem at all. Thanks.